Hello, and welcome to Community Conversation, the show that's for and about people who live in Reading. My name is Kevin Vent, and I'm going to be your host for this episode. And in this episode, we have Ruth Urell, who is the director of the Reading Public Library. And she's going to be here, and she's going to share about the progress that is being made on building the new Reading Public Library over on Middlesex Ave. But first, Katie Robertson had a conversation with the aquatics director from the Burbank YMCA, Amy Vent. Let's listen to that conversation now. Hi, I'm with Amy Vent, the Director of Aquatics at Burbank YMCA. Welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Glad to be here today. Um, so how long have you been at the Y and the Director of the Aquatics Program? <laughs> so I've been with YMCA for 22 years with Greater Boston, which Burbank is part of, for 16. And I've been in my current role with the Y for nine years now. That's fantastic. <laughs> um, so what kind of programs does the Y Aquatics Program support? What's your, your mode of operandi? <laughs> well, there are a wide range of classes and programs that the Y offers um, within the pool. Uh, th of course, swim lessons for all ages. We start as young as six months and go all the way up through adults. We have our competitive swim team. We also have our adult swim team, master's program. We have water exercise classes special needs programs, and then we run CPR, first aid, and lifeguarding courses. So coming into the winter, what kind of um, programming can people expect to see um, coming up? Just about all of that. Uh, we pretty much offer all of our programs year-round. Different days and times may vary based on um, the given session, but our f winter and fall sessions we run all of that regular programming. We're hoping for our winter to actually do an indoor triathlon pro um, program as well to help people get ready for the spring season. So teach them how to work in the pool as well as keep them conditioned upstairs. Yeah. I know that swim lessons are a major part of a right. YMCA. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about um, what goes into swim lessons? Certainly. So swim lessons are, as I said, for all ages. We have four different categories of swim lessons. We have parent-child, which are for the children under the age of three. And that purpose is really designed to get the children used to the water, to teach them basic safety skills, how to float, how to blow bubbles, um, and to teach the parents how to be safe with their children in the water. Oh. Then we have our preschool program, which is for um, children three years of age to about kindergarten and we start really working on independent movement, body position, um, breathing, working on getting them to be able to swim without flotation. Our youth program starts at first grade and we have nine different levels depending on the child's ability and we focus more on the stroke technique at that element. So we're really working to build their distance and build their stroke ability. And then we have our adults and our adults are again for all levels so we have beginners or intermediates as well as those adults who really just want to refine their mm -hmm. stroke technique as well. It sounds really like a progressive um, movement that there's uh, testing going yes. on and, and rather than being an age issue it's really a, um, a practicing issue as well. Very much so within each age group um, there are multiple levels and so it's designed for the children to take each level possibly a couple of times until they've achieved all the skills um, necessary and then they progress on to the next level. So for children to really, or adults, to really succeed in the program, the more continuous they go through, the more progression you're going to see. The children's muscle memory is a big part of it for kids because they build their stamina, they build their endurance, and so when they take a session off, which people do often <laughs> in the winter. I know it's cold and wet hair. <laughs> yeah. But um, when they, we definitely see when children take a session or two off that it's amazing how much they go back and they have to rebuild all those skills again. As they get older, that doesn't happen as much, but especially at those younger ages, it's really important for the continuousness to um, progress their skills. Yeah. Um, speaking of winter, um, what kind of weather, what, what what goes into weather decisions at the Y? How can people <laughs> find out if there is weather, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> which I'm likely there should be? Um, how can mm -hmm. people find out about closings and, and rescheduling? Definitely. So um, with the weather, um, if we do have to cancel lessons, and we try not to, but if we do cancel lessons, it's always on our Facebook page, 
it's um, if people sign up for our email list, they'll get a constant contact that okay. will contact them as well. Also, if they're whether or not they're Reading residents, we do follow the Reading school system. So if Reading doesn't have school in the morning and there was actual snow, not because it was too cold or something like sure. that, um, then our classes are canceled until noon. So that's an automatic mm -hmm. um, for families. So they can just watch the regular closings and see. And then we do try to reschedule, if at all possible, during for this upcoming session, we'll reschedule during the Christmas break. We also, but then we'll use February vacation week to make up for the January or February classes. So um, we'll give those out to the families as well as post it in all those places mm -hmm. as well. I know that safety is a major issue in aquatics particularly um, over at the Y. So can you talk a little bit about um, the training that lifeguards and swim instructors get? Definitely. So all of Obviously, all of our staff are certified. Um, <laughs> the expectation for the lifeguards is um, they can be YMCA or Red Cross certified, but we cross everybody over to YMCA so that they're all trained in the same exact skills. Um, with that certification comes CPR, first aid, O2. We have monthly in-services for our guards, so every lifeguard has to attend a monthly in-service to practice their skills, as well as we do weekly and daily drills on all of our lifeguards to make sure they're always um, aware of their environment, on top of their skills, practice. So possible if anybody's been to the Y, they might have heard that alarm go off and say there's an emergency <laughs> in the pool and then seen the staff practicing the skills. And we do do that once a week to make sure we're running through every element of an emergency so that, God forbid, we have a real one, we're ready um, and prepared to respond to it. All of our swim instructors are also CPR, first aid, and O2 certified. So again, they can assist in an emergency if there was any um, situation that occurred. Most often with our swim classes, we get the bloody nose or something <laughs> like that, um, especially at this time of year. But um, So they're trained to respond to those types of situations. We also do in-services with our instructors. So every session, our instructors um, have an in-service where we practice the skills. We go over um, updates, any expectations that we have. And then for both our guards and our instructors, we're always um, doing, we call them quick checks. But these are just that kind of, let's go look. Are they actually doing what they're expected? So um, make sure that everybody's on top of it so they never know when they're being checked on. <laughs> Um, to see their <laughs> skills as well. So, um, so we talked a little. Well, we talked a little bit about the um, children's program with the mm -hmm. swim lessons. Can you talk a little bit about the adult um, kind of aerobic programs that I, I know yep. that you do as well? Very popular, um, <laughs> our water aerobics. So it's benefit of membership. So that is as opposed to the swim lessons where you don't need to be a member okay. um, to take the program um, for water exercise. You do need to be a member. But we run a wide variety of classes. They're all free with membership. And so we have everything from just a basic um, exercise program to deep water. We have water Zumba. That was very <laughs> popular, fun. very fun. Um, water yoga. We also have low impact. So for those who may have arthritis or joint issues, um, we have some of those much lower impact that still keep um, keep the adults active and moving, but have less impact on their joints. We have some that are in deep water, some that are in shallow water, and some that are in our warm pool. So really trying to meet everybody's needs where they are to keep them active. But water exercise is such a great way um, for adults to exercise because it doesn't have the same impact that exercising in the fitness center um, would have where you're hitting on your knees, et cetera, because the water has that additional buoyancy. Mm -hmm. So especially um, as you get older, it's a great way to stay active and fit. At the same time, though, it's a pretty hard workout as well. Yes. <laughs> it can be. It can definitely be <laughs> a hard workout. If you choose workout. it to be, yeah. <laughs> um, and our instructors really work with the participants to, you know, obviously they want everybody trying to do the same skills, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, don't do this skill if you've had a hip replacement or do it at your own pace instead of doing it at this time, do it at half time if that's what works for you. But you'll definitely get your cardio um, worked up and you'll definitely um, 
build some muscle tone. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, I know that a lot of people enjoy uh, working out in the pool, be it mm -hmm. swimming or um, or aerobics. And the pool is open for open lanes as well. Yes. Usually. Yes. So we have just about, not quite, there are certain times like Saturday mornings where there's no <laughs> lap swim, but pretty much there's a minimum of one lap lane available at almost every hour that the Y is open. And um, so members are welcome to come in and swim laps. And then we have open swim as well. So for just recreational swimming, um, games, people can come in during um, any of the open times. And that varies whether it's in our warm therapy pool or in our regular lap pool. Great. Um, how can people find out more about aquatics and, and the Y in general here in Reading? So, um, Come right in. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to have you come in. We can give you a tour, but you can also check out the website. So um, we're part of YMCA of Greater Boston. So it's ymcaboston.org slash Burbank. We'll get you to our branches page of the association website. So you can certainly go up there. You can check out our Facebook page. Uh, we try to keep um, updates on there. We were just posting some of our Halloween pictures ah, from our haunted trails um, <laughs> last Friday. So that was fun. But, um, and certainly for aquatics, you're welcome to just contact me at event at ymcaboston.org. I'd be glad to answer any questions. That's great. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, again, I'm here with Amy Vent, the Director of Aquatics at the Burbank YMCA, here with Community Conversations. The only thing you can really do at the end of the day is compare a guy to his contemporaries. Right. It's hard to compare Brady to Terry Bradshaw. The game was different in the 70s than it is now. They've won something like 15 or 16 more games than any other team in the NFL yep. in that span of time. Luck looks like an NFL quarterback. Um, I remember I called everyone I knew when they, when they uh, traded for Garnett. Um, that was just one of the most amazing things <laughs> of my life. Really. <laughs> if John Farrell could fix John Lester, then your pitching problem is partially solved. Kareem had that one unstoppable shot, the skyhook, and he milked it for, what, 35,000 <laughs> points or something like that. Just, again, versatility, Mr. Patriot. Yeah. If you needed something, he's going to get it done. I am to this show as Alec Baldwin is to SNL, so. <laughs> this is the infamous Jason Barrett that shoves uh, his glove he, he right is. into Alex Rodriguez's <laughs> face. Hello and welcome back to Community Conversation. I'm here with Ruth Urell, who is the director of the Reading Public Library. And this is your second time, so welcome back, Ruth. Thank you, Kevin. Great and to be here. Well, it's great to have you back. And uh, last time when you were here, we talked more about the programming of the library and kind of let people know that the library is still alive and kicking. Uh, but today we're going to talk a little bit about the library renovation project. Uh, as most people know, the town voted a couple years ago to begin a renovation project at the library. Maybe you could just update us on kind of what is being updated or what is being renovated in the library. Oh, that's a, that's a big subject. I know it's a big subject. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big subject. Um, it's a massive renovation mm -hmm. um, right down to the um, infrastructure. And it's actually all 120. 120. Okay, 120. Yeah. And um, uh, it, uh, I guess the, the, the word that would probably sum up um, the uh, challenges, the big challenges, is water. Every, there was okay. water everywhere. And um, so uh, from the roof to the basement, we had um, water coming in, and um, we were patching and okay. trying to hold that back. Sure. But um, the damage was, was being done. Well, water damages masonry, it damages yes. all sorts of interiors, the yep. wiring and, and windows and all that kind of and thing. And windows, so. yes. So um, at every turn, the damage has revealed itself more and okay. um, more extensively. So we knew we were on our last legs. Every time we turned around, we had to leave in the evening. We'd be putting tarps over book shelves in wow. the children's room, okay. bookshelves in the um, in the uh, lower level. The pipes were leaking. The yeah. foundation was, uh, water was coming in, and it was coming in uh, through the attic and okay. down through ceilings. So um, 
so there's there's that sort of uh, remediation. Sure. And so part of the first part of the project then is to kind of fix that. It, that's it's, right. It's that's to replace right. the roofs, yep. fix the windows, get the uh, the 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 plumbing all taken care yes. of in the building and so yep. forth, and to kind of uh, shore up the masonry and that that's type right. of thing. And um, in addition to shoring up, there is actual um, structural work that's required. Okay. All right. uh, codes have changed, and um, so there are steel beams going in, mm -hmm. and um, places where there were renovations over the years, uh, some of the load-bearing walls have been removed, and there okay. were just little molly columns, or lolly columns, I guess, yeah, yeah. Um, put in. So uh, we had floor loading issues to address. Okay. So about two-thirds of the project is the um, renovation. Okay. And, um, and just, I, just so we're aware, we act, the, the, the whole building is basically gutted to, that's to right. do that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it had to be. I mean, there's some, obviously, uh, everyone is concerned to try to keep what's uh, possible to preserve. Sure. Um, but for example, I think people are very interested in the, um, if they've gone by, I know that they've been concerned to see that the portico share is not on the front of the building at the moment. Okay. So uh, when, the, um, when they began to um, excavate to shore that up, they discovered that in fact it was just built on rubble. It wasn't really any, oh, really? Okay. there wasn't really any foundation there. So in order to build the foundation, they've had to remove it. They're going to try to preserve as many of the elements sure. and um, restore them. But some of them were rotted and some of them um, right. too severely compromised. So um, that's an example where some things will be replicated yep. and other pieces will be um, restored. And, but care and is being back. taken to kind of preserve the historic look of the building um, when all is said and done. Yeah. Yes. There's been a lot of, um, we've done a lot of uh, We've had a lot of interaction with the um, Historical Commission, who are very sure. knowledgeable people about um, a lot of the elements of the building, and mm -hmm. um, particularly paying attention to the windows, for example. The windows, unfortunately, okay. the, even the frames were um, mm. extensively rotted, yeah. and um, the masonry around them. So most of the windows are being um, replaced. Actually, all of the windows are being replaced. Uh, I keep looking at the picture, I'm yeah. sorry, <laughs> to remind me. Um, but there are some of the signature windows that uh, we're looking to have them restored okay. so that they can be used inside the building for um, decorative purposes. Oh, okay. all right. So that will be um, really nice to have those sure. kinds of grace notes. And um, I think we've had very, uh, a very um, balanced approach mm -hmm. to sort of honoring the history of the building yeah. and um, its um, uh, local significance sure. and at the same time um, trying to make it work very well as a modern library which right. um, has pretty different requirements from a 120 year old school Absolutely. building. And I think a lot of people forget that the building was not built as a library. That's right. It was built as yeah. a school building and so it was built to those type of yes. parameters and yeah. even a library 120 years ago had different parameters than a school building did. That's so right. to remember that, that, that you're, we're not just renovating a, a library building, we're renovating a library, a school building turned library. That's right. Um, and that happening. So, so we have all the renovation concerns, roofs and windows and masonry yes. and foundations and all that kind <laughs> Thing, but there's also a significant addition happening to, yes. to, to the library as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I think the, um, to me, one of the most exciting aspects of this is the fact that the new entrance from the parking lot will be actually part of that new addition. Okay. And um, people will, for the first time, be able to go into the building at ground level okay. and um, there'll be an elevator right there sure. and there'll be a stairway half stairs up to the main floor half stairs down to the lower okay. level so that's going to be a massive improvement I think the um, the obstacle of those old stairs sure. or that big long ramp right. was significant and um, we're just thrilled that the building will be so much easier to get in and out sure. of alone sure. especially as the population ages over the next yes. 10 15 20 years yes so um, this wonderful new elevator, <laughs> I never thought I'd be that excited about a new elevator, but um, it will actually um, do those half levels, of course, and then go on up yeah. um, to the second floor as well to, um, to the children's room. The um, main part of the addition on the main floor, it's a two-story addition compared mm -hmm. to a three-story building. Um, the main part of the addition will be a bright new reading room for um, okay. adult use. And um, there'll be some areas that will be for really silent mm -hmm. uh, reading. And then there's a small study room 
okay. uh, within that. It will be very bright. There's um, south and east sun there, so mm -hmm. it'll be lovely and light. And on the lower level, um, there will be a 150-person community room okay. and a 30-person uh, small meeting room. All right. um, those will all be equipped so that uh, when people come to a program, they'll actually be able to hear and okay. see and <laughs> <laughs> kind of um, Kind of with all the modern conveniences, That's right. hearing and seeing. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Um, we were struggling with... Um, um, uh, I think they call it aftermarket kinds of sound systems and right, things. Right. So, um, so what types of events do you foresee happening in those types of places? Uh, well, we, we're actually just concluding our uh, community survey also okay, at good, this point. So we're, we're really hearing from people that they want more programming, more programs. Sure. And um, we have a lot of um, wonderful ideas and people are letting us know that they're interested in um, lots of ongoing activities. Okay. And um, other community groups are very interested in using some of the spaces as well. Okay, good. So, so we've only got a couple minutes left, and I know right. one of the things that people, I know you're excited about it, and that's <laughs> excellent, um, but uh, I know one of the things that people are interested in, kind of where are we at in terms of the process yes. now? I know yeah. you, you've moved over to a general way, and you've set that's up right. temporary library quarters over there, um, and people who have driven by have seen the gutting of the building, but yes. what else is going on? Kind of where are we at in the process at this point? So um, we actually moved into the um, temporary library year ago mm -hmm. this month and um, we expect that we'll probably be there uh, until next summer okay um, which is more or less on track and been Good. some some hitches but um, more or less and uh, the construction is um, proceeding there are a lot of workers there between yeah. 30 and 50 most oh, days okay. and they're uh, working to do the kinds of things that need to get finished before the cold weather right. sets in um, the right now I'm very excited because the um, turret towers are being uh, restored oh, okay. and um, they're being built on site and they are going to be uh, lifted mm -hmm. into place on uh, the, uh, the week of November 16th so okay. they'll become um, visible and uh, over the winter they'll be working on the interior sure. and um, we hope wrapping it up in the spring so that we can start to have furniture and equipment delivered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow so they're on track and yep. so within, uh, you know, by you said by November 16th, uh, the, the turret towers will be in place. And that'll be something for the community, really, to be able to, that will to be see. Lovely. And it'll be exciting yes. for the community to see. Yeah. And then you're anticipating next summer uh, right. being able to occupy the space. Yep. So uh, when do you think the building will be finished versus furnished? Um, yeah, they're talking, about, they're talking about a late spring uh, late being spring. finished. Okay. The site work, of course, will have to be, uh, that will. Sure. Be weather dependent. Right, right. Yeah. And then uh, just uh, just a few other things is the building, of course, and then there's the grounds. Anything else happening with the grounds in terms of the landscaping and parking and entrances and all that kind of stuff? Um, yes, there'll be a um, driveway, an exit driveway across the front, which is okay. new, and um, there'll be um, better traffic flow on mm -hmm. the um, parking lot side, and people will be able to drop their passengers off uh, safely in front of the oh, okay. um, entry door. So that's that's an improvement. So that's and an accessibility issue there as well. That's yeah. a, a big improvement. We'll have a um, book drop that goes right into the building, okay. one that um, people can walk up to, and we will have one in the parking lot as well for sure. um, using during closed times and okay. right from the car. Um, and the meeting rooms, the community rooms, will be accessible uh, from either side, I believe. Okay. Um, some of those details are, are sort of being worked through. But they, um, they will be easily accessible, and um, people won't have to maneuver stairs to uh, okay. get to those. Well, that's terrific. It sounds like uh, things yeah. are coming along smoothly, and uh, yeah. we look forward to the great unveiling yeah. sometime <laughs> next summer, probably next fall. You'll probably have an open house or something like that yes. once everybody's all settled in and, and ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so we look forward to seeing that as a community, is, and I'm just interested myself just personally. Great. So. <laughs> well, thank you for being on the program, Ruth, thank again. You. Thank you for coming on by and sharing a little bit about the library project and, and kind of what we're, we can look forward to and, and, uh, and all that's happening there. So we thank you for coming on today. Thank you, Kevin. I enjoyed it. Oh, it was a thing. Thank, thank you. you. And we thank you for watching. We'll be back in just one moment here on Community Conversation on RCTV. Abundant Life Christian School is a school committed to the nurture of the whole child, academically, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Our staff have been called by God to enter the teaching profession. 
as evidence of God's call, they are dedicated to and gifted in the task of helping parents grow kids God's way. Academically, students are engaged in the combination of the best of both worlds, tradition and innovation. Character values are emphasized throughout days that focus on a broad educational experience and a strong academic foundation. To learn more about Abundant Life Christian School, please go to our website at www.ablifeschool.org. Thank you for watching Community Conversation today. Thank you to Ruth Urell and Amy Vent for being here with us. Be sure to look for our future episodes as well. Have a great day.